Hello. Now today I want to talk about what is cymatics. And some of you may be aware what cymatics are, uh, but from my understanding and my own experience, I've noticed that a lot of people actually don't know what cymatics are is. And that's not to say that everybody in the world should know. However, if you're really into modalities such as music, art, healing, medicine, then this could be a really interesting thing to at least know about. And yeah, let's get right into it. So my understanding of what somatics is, is it's, it's a study of visible sound and vibration. So everything is a vibration at its core. Like this table behind me has a vibration. I have my own vibration. You know, these Rudraksha, Kwandam beads, they have their own uh, vibration. Um, and you know, as we also can tell, the human ear is not able to hear like every single sound that there is. I don't feel that the human is in a place in which the human should be allowed to hear every single sound. Um, you know, we already know just hearing certain sounds for a long period of time, even sometimes just for 20 seconds is really irritating. To one's being so you know yes of course we're not supposed to hear every single sound at this point in um in time time is a funny thing but let's just use that term time so you know but obviously with that you know it can kind of leave you a bit curious as to okay well if everything has a sound everything has its own vibration um, and my ear cannot hear that what's another way in which that we can um get to understand a little bit more about that well one can be through the use of the eye you know the visualization again I also am aware that we're not supposed to see everything however we can um, we we can also have the potential to do that so and this is not to say that um, the cymatics will allow you to see every single vibration every vibration should I say However, it um, could allow you to see things that maybe you can't hear. And especially it would be um, really quite, I guess, playful for those that actually do have hearing um, impairments as well, but can visually see it quite, quite well. So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of other uses for it, and I can get into that some more when we get a little bit further along. So often uh, the way that cymatics can be measured is through playing a sound on a surface. And I've seen quite a number of examples of this. One of the um, more sort of uh, probably ones that probably been around for about a hundred years. I mean, a lot of these things I'm talking about, you know, especially with this one I'm about to share, it's been known about for a very, very long time. A lot of ancient cultures have talked about cymatics. They wouldn't use it as that term. Um, but yeah, that's, so that's something else I could probably share with you. But I'll just share this first example with you before I get into that. And that is like you can sometimes see how people will get like a flat board, it might be a square board, black, and they'll be able to put sand on it and then they'll be able to play a note of some sort, a hertz range onto it, and the sand will start to form shapes. It will start to group together in certain ways. And that is an example of, of cymatics. Now, an example of that in uh, ancient times would be that some of the paintings, especially those that you may find on certain rock formations they will have used um, maybe in caves they would sometimes like burn plants burn things and then they would use you know different sounds maybe through the voice or instruments and they could see sound or vibration through the smoke that was coming from from what was being played in that space and then they would paint uh, maybe some of their visions and stuff that they could see through that and that's just like one one example of ancient ancient sort of cymatics um, another one is obviously you can freeze water and this is not so much more of a musical one but more of a the use of the voice and intention freezing water and the particles of the water will freeze into certain sort of shapes and depending on the intention and what's been spoken the emotion around it will may depend on what kind of shapes get created that's sort of like dr emoto's work there you can find that um all on google or any other search engine should i say that you wish to use 
and then another one is more obviously more modern technology is being able to create cymatics with obviously sound, water and light in, on a camera in a certain way in which they can set that up. I actually have some artwork in my in the house that I live in. Um, I'm not actually recording in my house right now, this is somewhere else, some pictures that I've brought um, as a beautiful sort of photography artist who can create these beautiful cymatics with the use of water, sound and, and um, light to the camera. Very much the camera is looking down upon these, um, this technology and it's really beautiful. Like With that, um, actually with all of these examples, certain sounds will create certain pictures and you may start to notice that some sounds may create more perceived beautiful pictures than others. A great example of this is when you look at, uh, I guess most modern music is played at 440 hertz. It's just sort of the standard pitch um, around, I guess, the modern world at this point in time. And, and then you maybe drop that down 8 hertz to something, say 432, you'll notice that the shapes are slightly different. And I, you know, I leave that up to you as to your own perception on an interpretation of the difference just in the 8 hertz alone can create and the different kind of shapes and formations that that shows you. Um, well, I guess obviously cymatics is a beautiful form of art um, and as with most art it can also then be used as a growth and healing tool which then can also obviously flow into the field of medicine and you know so cymatics can also be a good use of a tool for learning about how sound can influence like our bodies our mind, our emotion, the ether, whatever it is that you want to believe in, in that sort of uh, realm, you know, and matter, you know, that's beyond our supposed, you know, avatars, things like plants, animals, water. And yeah, it's a really interesting sort of field to, to look into. And, and, you know, I would be curious if any of you are actually already are artists creating art like this, or you are um, using healing modalities like this, or maybe you even study the field of science and music and maybe you have some things you want to share or you weren't aware of that but you already are in a lot of those uh, fields and you want to learn some more. I mean, we have a sound healing um, practitioner course that my partner and I uh, teach online and I can leave a link, I'll actually, I will leave a link to that in the description box below in which you can obviously um, go in and enroll with us to learn more about that and like you don't actually have to be interested in necessarily in being a sound healer but if you're interested obviously in science and music uh, healing modalities it can be a really uh, nice sort of I guess addition to to what it is that you might know plus it may open a whole other door of potential possibilities that you were not even aware of as well so yeah if you've got any comments or questions please them in the comment section down below or the description um, box sorry the description box will contain all the links of my other social media platforms in that course as well and I will see you in the next vlog